And we've looked at the reversing of the chain rule. Um, we spoke about how we would go about doing that. We looked at two scenarios where that happened. One was uh, in the form ax plus b, n plus 1 over n plus 1, 1 over a, yes. So that was the one formula that we used. The second of the formulas we looked at related to the outcomes involving log x or lin x. Those were the two situations we found ourselves in. That was effectively uh, the steps we would take in order to reverse the chain rule. Reversing the product rule, when we get into the upper set, we will be looking at an approach that is both more intuitive, in my view, and quicker and easier. So you might argue, well, what's the point of us doing this now? Well, because your specification requires it. That's unfortunately probably the main reason. Um, but also for us to look at something from a different perspective. Now, what I'm going to do is very much a procedural thing. Largely because um, a lot of it is about following some steps and in my mind knowing also that the potential exists that we will be using an, a, another approach at a, at a later date that is probably more slightly intuitive, more you know, about, about um, um, and the steps are easier to follow and so on. So I've got that in my mind the whole time. But I'm very conscious that we can't simply ignore this. So here goes. If they may ask a question, they may say, okay, um, find the solution of the following. So I've quite deliberately chosen a question, I think, that would um, ordinarily be solved quite easily. I would expand the brackets, I'd get x squared plus x, and then integrate those two things separately. That's quite quick. That's quite easy. That's not a difficult thing to do. So we'll have a look at that in a moment. But what I really wanted to do was to show that there are other steps we could take that would also apply to more advanced questions of this type. Okay? So if there's, this became the power of 2 or was a square root or whatever, then obviously we need to think about how we would approach that um, in a, a way that would be, in this case, certainly quite procedural. So we'll follow some steps. Okay? Uh, and then we'll check it at the end as well. So we're going to go through a few phases. So if you can copy these down. Just make sure I've updated the... Uh, so, Sophia, Marcus, what I'm basically looking at here for half the lesson is reversing the product rule. We've done reversing the chain rule, we looked at two different scenarios there. And, I said, and I'll say this very briefly, there is a method we'll do in the upper six that's quicker, easier, and more efficient. But I want to have a look at this as an alternative. It's not my favourite. Certainly, if I had the option, I would go with the other one. Um, but we need to be at least aware of this. And I'm going to do it very procedurally. Okay, so they may not, they, they, you may not necessarily see all the intuitiveness about it, but ultimately, it's steps that you could follow if you were told this is what we want. If they gave you a choice, which they most likely would, I would almost certainly go with the other option. Um, and you'll see why when we do that. And I'll, make it, I'll draw comparisons when we, when we get there. So we're going to go through some steps here. The first step I want us to do is we're obviously looking at this as if, if I was differentiating this, I've got a function times another function, so effectively I would be using the product rule. Yeah, now clearly I can just expand the brackets and take it from there. That would be, I've chosen deliberately an easier example. Uh, I would take a different approach, but if I wanted to stick to rules, I would have probably used the product rule if I was, multiple, if I was uh, differentiating. But we're not, we're integrating. First thing I want to do here, and again, bear with me. There are steps here that you may not necessarily come out of this process going, I understand everything. The key really is just follow these steps for the time being, and we can draw some comparisons later, and hopefully you'll see the connections. I just want to start by taking a, the first one and integrating it. Sorry, the, the, the x plus 1. So leave the x for now, we're just going to go with the x plus 1. And if we integrate that, we will end up with a half x squared plus x. Would you agree with that? That's the integral of x plus 1 dx. The second step we're going to take is we're now going to use the product rule. And we're going to use that piece of information there, half x squared plus x. And we're going to multiply it by the one we didn't integrate, x. Okay, so that's step two. So we take that piece of information and multiply it by the x. 
And if we use the product rule here, uh, we know the product rule is VDU plus UDV, which in this instance is going to be, well, V is going to be X, and the derivative of that is going to be X plus 1. All we'll happy with that? That's the VDU bit. Plus the UDV, well, U is a half X squared plus X, times the derivative of V, which is just going to be times 1. Everyone okay so far? Happy with that? Okay. So let me just neaten this up a little bit. That means that our dy dx is going to equal x times x plus 1 plus a half x squared plus x, because it's just times 1. Hopefully what you will notice here is that that is the question. That bit. But we've got an extra bit in the end that we're going to have to somehow get, a, get rid of. Yes, because we've got part of the thing we're dealing with here. Yes, but we've also got an extra bit. All right, so we need to get rid of that. So our third step is going to integrate a half x squared plus x. And if we do that, we're going to have a half times the integral of x squared plus the integral of x. All okay so far? I'm just splitting them up. Yep. You get a chair, so the bottom of the board. We know that's going to equal a half times a third x cubed plus a half x squared. All happy so far? A half times x cubed over 3 plus x squared over 2, or a half x squared. Thumbs up so far? All right, so let me neaten that a bit. That's a sixth x cubed. plus a half x squared. Our final answer is going to be what we have here, so stage number four, is going to be uh, our half x squared plus x times x minus what we've just got rid of, the six x cubed uh, minus a half x squared. And that's our final answer for the integral of x times x plus 1. And how can I check that? Well, to double check this, and you wouldn't need to, but for the purposes of this example, let's check that. If I differentiated that, I should get that. Yes? So the reverse should be true. If the integral of that is that statement there, then surely the derivative of that should take me back to my original question. And if that's the case, then I know I've done this correctly. Well, let's have a look. If I looked at neatening this up a bit, so you're going to have a half x cubed uh, plus x squared minus a 6x cubed minus a half x squared. And I found dy dx here. Well, that's, what's that going to be? You're going to have 3 over 2 x squared plus 2x minus a half x squared minus x. All happy so far? What does that become? Well, dy dx will become 1 and a half x squared minus a half x squared plus x squared. 2x minus x, is that the same as the original question? Yes, it is. Okay, so there are four steps to take in each case, and I'm going to give you one at the moment we're going to work together on, um, on that board over there, which I won't, well, I might video, but we'll just see uh, how we're getting along. But the main thing really is to follow those four steps. You don't need to go about checking your answer. I'm showing that only to show you the comparison. All right? 
So step one, integrate just what's in brackets. If that was a square root, you'd have a brackets to power of a half. Then the product rule was whatever your answer is there and the other linear piece, the x. Once you've used the product rule, you'll notice that actually it's taking you a different, it's taking you to the answer, the derivative is, yes. So we're almost there with this dy dx bit, but we've got an extra bit we need to get rid of as well. So we're almost getting to where we need to get to. So that extra bit needs to be integrated and then taken away. So that we're, all we're dealing with is that bit of the answer, not all of that. Are we getting the idea at least? All right. So I understand that that bit's going to give me, using the product rule, it's going to give me my answer, but a bit extra. I want to get rid of the extra. And if I do that, I'm just left with the x and the x plus 1, in this case, x squared plus x, just in a different format. So, the idea really is sort of almost shedding pieces as you go along to get back to where you're going. Now, the, the method we will use in the upper sect is called, um, uh, we've got uh, by parts, it's called integration by parts, and it's probably half the working. Okay? And in many ways, in my view, although this is not totally counterintuitive, I think that the integration by parts is more intuitive. And given the choice, I'd probably go with that option. There are fewer possibilities for mistakes as well. So for the purposes of the video, we're doing a second example. We're following the four steps we used initially on the middle board, plus we're going to check. We don't need to check, but I just want to draw some comparisons. So I'll give you a chance to try this on your own, and I'll start uh, putting my answer on the board in a moment. Okay, having a look at my solution, step number one was to integrate just what was in the bracket squared, which gave us an answer of 1 sixth, 2x plus 1 to the power of 3. Now we can reintroduce the x we didn't use, and use the product rule. And the reason we're using the product rule, much like when we check, is that the dy dx is supposed to lead us back to the start. We get that idea. Okay, so the key to this question is, if I'm going to take an approach, if I reverse that approach, will it take me back to the beginning? In this instance, by using the 1, 6, 2, 1, power 3 and multiplying it by the original one using the product rule, well, we get close because you've got the x and the 2x plus 1 all squared using the product rule, and that's the question, but we've got this tag on, we've got this extra bit of information that also results 1 6 times 2x plus 1 all cubed. We've got to find a way of getting rid of that, so we'll just find this integral, and so if we integrate the bit we don't want, we get the answer 1 over 48 times 2x plus 1 to the power of 4. That bit can now be taken away from what was useful to us, which was this bit here. All right. So that was the bit that we that we um, thought would take us to the answer, but gave us a bit too much extra. We follow that principle. So we used that. We got our answer, but, but also a little bit more. The little bit more needs to be integrated and removed, which is the 148 2x plus 1 to the power of 4. If we differentiate that, which is a bit harder than doing the one we did on the middle board, which is clearly a lot easier to work with, there's more going on here. I need the product rule with that one. I don't, well, I don't need the product rule, it's the chain rule. Uh, the product rule gives me what I want, plus a sixth, minus a sixth, so those two cancel each other out, and it takes me to the question I need. Right. So, uh, the fifth step is not important. I'm only showing it as a, as a means of comparison. The, one that, the steps that are important are Isolate what's in brackets. If that, was a, if that was a square root, then that's the one you're dealing with, the power half. I use the reverse chain rule here in this instance to find that outcome there. Multiply to the x we haven't used. Step three, take away what we don't want, integrate it, and then bring it all together. You can stop there. Okay, there's no need for you to go to step five. I'm going to give you one more question, but to do in your own time, because I think it's time for a mass break, and then a quick quiz.